Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Whittleful. I'm Stacey Whittle. This is my podcast. Is it a podcast when it's recording? I, I still think yes. Yes, there's a pod, podcast, vid, video cast. Where I talk about my geeky life. What I've been watching and reading and listening to and crafting. Um over the last little while and it tends to be quite tangent y and stream of consciousness y. Um haven't worked out how to use any editing software yet, so this is just as it comes out me gob, you know. That's what it is. So if I say anything stupid like I did last time when I got my spinning information really messed up because I wasn't expecting to talk about it. what happens when you do a stream of conscious so um yeah so it's been a little while since I did one it's kind of felt very I don't know inappropriate or frivolous or something like that at the minute with the world on fire um and I felt like maybe I needed to just give it a bit of space and let other people talk because I have such a massive audience you know um it, that that felt appropriate but you know what maybe maybe a little bit of frivolous is a good thing so here i am and uh you would think i would have more to tell you about <laughs> actually do after three weeks four weeks i'm not quite i'm not quite sure now um so yes i have a format believe it or not <laughs> that i stick roughly to and that's just my categories in which i'll talk about first what i've read and listen to um what I, then what I've watched and then what I've been crafting so that's roughly it um like I say I do go off on tangents and I keep looking down because I have notes they're not great notes I'll show you my notes they're the most messy scribbled ridiculous messy uh aids to memoir I speak fluent French don't you know uh -huh. Um, so yeah, so yeah, this, let's just get started. What I've been reading, first off, if you've been watching, if you've watched any of my episodes, you know, I've got somewhat of a 2008 saga going on in that, I subscribed finally after being a reader for years and years and years, but haven't had a break while, um, while I was maternity leave, I said, um, so I've come back to 2000 AD, I've subscribed, I got a couple of issues and then I got no issues. Then I had to get in touch with them and they said, right, okay, we'll send you, you a couple of missing issues. So I got those and then I got nothing. So then I had to get in touch with them again and say, well, I still haven't got anything. I got the two you sent, but then I didn't get any more. So then they realized that there'd been some sort of computer glitch. This is probably very boring, but this is these are the facts. Jack. Um, there'd been some sort of computer glitch and they'd got my address wrong. So now they were going to send out the now four missing issues and put my address right so that hopefully I would then get my subscription. I received the four and then I received a normal subscriber edition but so much had time had passed between the two that I'm still missing two issues. And honestly, I've just got a little pile of 2008 days now ready to read, but because there's missing ones in between, I just, I feel a little bit frustrated. So I've emailed them again today to see if they can send out the missing two, and then hopefully once they come, and I've got a, um, a run, an unbroken run that I can read, I'm going to do that. So... Um, it is pointless me doing a um, a, pro a progazode or whatever um, until I'm up to date because nobody wants to hear about like what are we now eleven weeks ago a comic so oh you might who knows but I'll do a sum up or something when I do finally get them so hopefully this time this time. 
Uh, the guy who's I've been dealing with has been really nice. Uh, it's just, just getting a little bit frustrating now, but hopefully. I'll have comics coming your way soon. <laughs> In the meantime, I have read quite a bit recently. Um, uh, and after not being able to concentrate on reading for ages, it's been quite nice. But I think I've been on a bit of a jag and now it's waning again. <laughs> so um, I was talking to you last time that I'd started to read um, Blackberry Wine by Joanne Harris, um, which is an odd book, but kind of beautiful and also a bit silly, but nice silly. Um, actually perfect bit of well-written nonsense for these times really so it's about a guy who and it's set as a flashback so it's partly present day and partly back to when he was a kid and when he was a kid he was quite a privileged kid his uh, mum was a um, act, famous actress and his dad owned a bread company or something but very owned it you know was very rich um, but they, they kind of didn't bother with them they were too busy and rich so he ended up going to stay with his grandparents in the summer in a little Yorkshire village and um, his time there was really important and um, that sort of coming of age type situation that happened to him then he made really good friends with an old bloke who was a gardener he's an amazing gardener um, and when he was grown, he wrote this um, book about his time in the, the sky, and the book became this brilliant bestseller. There are spoilers. Um, but then he never been able to write anything like that again. He wrote sort of um, trash science fiction after that under a different name. Um, and it was about, you think at first, it's about him rediscovering his writing voice but that's not what the book's about it's actually him just rediscovering or discovering who he actually is yes it sounded quite deep when it didn't appear to be about it, it was kind of, but it was it was about him sort of finding himself it's a finding himself book and it's partially set in France and it's beautifully written it has an air of the supernatural about it but it's not too um in your face so if you're not a fan of uh, supernatural why would you be here but you know well uh, but it is beautifully written and she's a very she's one of those storytellers that you can see the pictures very clearly in your head and apparently i was who was posting about it somebody was posting on facebook that that's actually a thing that you cannot have you can have not have the ability to picture something that's in your head that's been described or written to you which is mind-boggling i suppose it's you know one of those things where some people can smell color and some people i'm very um when i read it's a very visual thing i can see everything very very clearly and i, I, I thought that everybody could but apparently that's not true but those of us who can, I think, we're the awful arseholes that when there's a film coming out, complain so hard that it doesn't look right. It's not It's not the other ones. It's, it's us, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I, was, I really was shocked to find that out. So there you go. Every day is a school day. Uh, anyway, I really liked this story. I read it quite quickly in the end and it was, uh, it was a very satisfying read and um, not too um, heavy or anything like that. It was just a pleasant, lovely, uplifting read and I really, really enjoyed it. And it was the first thing I'd read by Joanne Harris. Um, my friend Nick um, Wilkinson, she's recommended her to me before and I've never got around to reading anything by her, but I'm definitely going to read more by her. I love her style. Um, so that was the first thing. Um, the next one that I read was a series that I've been reading um, for a long time. 
say a long time. I want to cough. Sorry. <coughs> sorry. Every time. I only have a cough when I come in here. I talk to you. It's your fault. Cheers. So yeah, there's an author that I, I've read for a long time called Kelly with a uh, spelled K E L L E Y Armstrong. And I started to read her years ago because she wrote a series of books called Women of the Other World. It wasn't called that when it started, but it became that. Um, there has been a television series made from her books um, based on the werewolf series that she wrote. And I think it was called Bitten. I've never seen it, but I heard tell that it's shit. Much like the Dresden Files. Although I did have Paul Blackthorne in it and he is really pretty. Even now he's bald because he's in Arrow. Anyway, what was I saying? Kelly Armstrong. So I really like her books and they've all, they, so the Women of the Other World book, the, there's a, each book will be focused on one particular woman and she will have a supernatural element. So um, the first one, um, Bitten, I think it's stolen, are a were female werewolf. And then the next ones are um, dime store magic and industrial magic, which is a witch. Um, what else is there? There's a, a media, a necromancer, a demon or a half demon. Um, so there's, there's a series of books. There's, there's quite a lot of them. 13 or 14, I think, actually, in the end. And I really love those books. I really love them. Um, but she's written lots of other series. She's very prolific. She's uh, written a series that I really enjoyed recently um, called Omens, about a girl who, who who can see omens and they're real. And it turns out it's because, she's, well, I'm not telling you. You might want to read it. You know, I like that. But this series isn't supernatural or um, in any way really um, sort of, geeky really it's a well i'm saying that it's about uh, a woman who's a, a police officer in america and her best her and her best friend get themselves into some situations where they need to go and hide for a while and they hear about this little town that you can disappear to for a certain amount of money so you can pay money um or you can be a really good cause you know someone who needs rescuing and you can be disappeared for between two and five years. Um, and then nobody knows where the place is. It's not on the maps. There's no sign of it. And um, you can you can disappear. So this is what they do. They end up managing to get themselves into this place, which is um, in the middle of nowhere, um, with no Wi-Fi, no access, no nothing, sort of log, log, log cabins in the Yukon. I think that's how you say it. Um, and, but you do have to work for your stay and she works at being a, a detective. Um, and there's five books in the series now and I really enjoyed the first couple. Um, and I've read this one and it, it wasn't my favourite and I couldn't even really tell you why. So there's been, it's quite hard to talk about it without giving spoilers for the rest of the series. But... I love the first couple. There's, um, they're all sort of murder investigations in the end because she's a detective in the middle of nowhere with limited resources, no real forensics, and it's all sort of like having to work it out and um, use your brain, and there's very little medical stuff. And so I, I found that really interesting. It was almost like a back to basics crime novel, in, so to speak, with a hint of romance. In the outback, or the Wunderland, the Yukon, well, anyway. Um, so, but this one, it really, it didn't, it felt like a part of another story rather than like a story on its own, if that makes sense. Um, and it was night, it was more sort of like a set up novel, which you wouldn't expect it. Um, book five, um, sort of settling characters in positions and establishing them in place and things like that. And so, although I enjoyed it and I read it really quickly because, I, again, I really like her style and I find her books really easy to read, it wasn't my favourite in the series, although I did enjoy it. So it's not a bad, it wasn't definitely wasn't bad or anything like that. It just wasn't as engaging as um, some of the others in the series. So 
She also writes the series of books, which I really like, about um, a woman who's a hit woman and she has a partner that she works with who's obviously a hit man um and they have really dubious morals and they try and explain their morals sometimes but really they're just they're really dubious morals um but they they're kind of funny and exciting and i like how she tries to explain and then sometimes just goes <laughs> well, i hit people <laughs> Uh, so she has slightly more of a moral code. So she only does, you know, people who really have got away with murder type thing rather than I'll just kill anyone for money. But it's it's interesting how they justify the uh, vigilantism. But yeah, I really like those books. There's only about two or three of those ones. Um, I don't know what it is with um, genre fiction that there's always masses amounts of these series but I kind of like that I like I like revisiting a place I like spending time with the same characters I like checking in with them and seeing how they're doing and feeling at home in in these places so maybe that's why maybe that's not just me maybe that's all of us and that's why we like these big sagas or these big runs of shorter books so, yeah, I, I would recommend that you try out the Rockton series if you're looking for something like that. But it's not, uh, you're best off starting at the beginning, not book five. Um, Also not really uh, genre fiction at all either. But I read a couple of Val McDermott books. Um, I used, I used to be up to date. I haven't read Val McDermott for, for a while, but I used to, I think what it was was, they're really go I love a crime book but sometimes hers are really gory and um often they're really um they can be a little bit hard going and disturbing and I think sometimes there should be that do need reminders that terrible people do terrible things and I'm not complaining about that but I think I'd read a lot of them and it was too much and then I had a break um, so I went back and reread one of her books called The Distant Echo, which I liked um, a lot when I read it the first time and even better when I started, because it was such a long time since I read it, I couldn't remember who the, <laughs> couldn't remember who the buddy was. So I was like, oh, I can't remember. I remember the story. Well, I'd actually started to read it, not realising that I'd read it. Do you do that? Have you done that? I thought, oh, I haven't read this one. Ah, and, sorry, tangent alert. This is why I thought I had not read it. When I bought this book, it's going to make me sound very... Anyway, when I bought it, I was really excited to read it. But the dust cover is a paperback. You know, the cover was made out of really weird material and I really couldn't bear the feel of it. Um, so I kept putting the book down because obviously when you're holding a paperback, it's in, you can touch you're touching the cover all the time, aren't you? I could not bear the feel of it, and so in the end, I must have read it and finished it, but I don't remember it. I, but I remember this tactile problem I had with it. And usually, I'm a bookkeeper. I don't I don't I keep them, and I'm a big rereader, so um, I have a lot of books over that side these are the dvds behind us the books over there um but i didn't have it so i must have um put it in the charity bag because i couldn't bear the feel of it i also got another book like that which was a knitting book and i actually ended up co covering that in cling film so that I could hold it. i don't know how to explain myself so i'm not even going to try so anyway i couldn't remember i didn't obviously in my head so wrapped up with this flipping textile issue with this book that i'd forgotten that i'd read it for a start and then once i got into it i was like oh no i have read this i didn't remember who the murderer was till right near the end so like i've had serious money's worth out of that book because <laughs> oh, well i bought it on kindle um as well so um, I really enjoyed it and this is one that starts back in the 70s and it's um, four university students coming home from uh, the St Andrews University um, coming home from a, a big boozy night out and they come across a, a body of a, um, 
I was not a body that come across a dying girl in a, in a churchyard um, and they run for help and uh, they are immediately the suspects. Um, and it's interesting because you get the police case at that point in the 70s and you follow the sort of police case and you follow the four of them. Um, and the police are so adamant, it's one of them, that you even start suspecting each one of them at different times. It's quite clever how it changes it about, how you're not sure who... You know, it's really uneven path. You're not really desperately sure about anybody. And then it, it comes forward to um, the present day. And um, this has just ruined all four of their lives. They're all, it's not ruined it, but it's its never left them. It's followed them um, and it's had real impact on their life. And then um, a cold case operation comes into effect in Fife and this is one of the cases that they're looking at and they're all, um, it's all dragged up again. And then the, out of the four, they start being murdered. So you're like, oh my God, he's got it. So it was really exciting um, and really well written. And like I say, even though I'd read it, I didn't guess who it was till quite near the end so that I don't know what that says about me or Val McDermott but there you go I really really enjoyed it and so um she'd written another book with the same uh it wasn't the same main policewoman there was a sort of a policewoman brought in to help with the cold case but she only becomes important later in the book and she has quite a small part um but then she takes over the running of the the cold case um, section in book two so it's all following her and it's interesting as well because the very nature of being called case it's another flashback so you're going backwards and forwards between um oh, it's the, the 80s this time and um, present day and I learned a lot about in this book actually because a lot of it's focused on um what happened in, during the miners strike in the 80s and the effect that it had on mining villages now I'm of an age where I, I vaguely remember it. I was quite young. I was born in 1977. Um, so I'm, I have vague memories of it. And although my granddad was minor, I don't think he was still working in the mines by that point. So um, I, it didn't impact our lives as much as we just saw it on the news. But this talks about the absolutely ravaging effect that it had Um in small mining towns in Scotland. And I found that really interesting. It's like that, it's like history that's within your reach sort of thing um, that you remember bits of, but not enough. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, I thought at the end it got a little bit OTT, but I really enjoyed the journey getting to the end and, and I really liked it. So there's another two books in that series, I think. So I will be picking up um, book three in the Karen Peary series um, and I just think Val McDermott's a brilliant writer I think she's inky so even though I'd guessed the ending of this second one um, it, it was still a fabulous ride and like I say I learned quite a bit as well um, about a time that I vaguely remember but don't really so I found that really good the other thing about um, Val McDermott is um, like I say, I'm a big fan of her. I've read a lot of her books and a lot of her book series. And I also went to see her do a talk in South Shields Library a long time, a long time ago, um, when she was living in the, in the area when they were making the Wire in the Blood series with Robson Green, um, which they made up here. And she was so interesting and so funny and so um, willing to answer anybody's questions and she did a book signing and also she was, she was absolutely brilliant and when you have a really positive encounter like that it stays with you doesn't it um anyway during lockdown her and um her partner professor joe sharp have been making some cooking programs on youtube and she calls it um cooking the books um in the fiction kitchen where she makes meals that are mentioned in her books and it's not only are the recipes lovely and um, I've bought the ingredients to make the chicken curry um they're just so funny kind of um sniping at each other and 
telling each other off and it's just a, it was just a joy it was just a joy they've got about five little episodes up now and the, it, it is a lot of Scottish di- dishes because a lot of the books are based in Scotland and Bowen is from Scotland um so there's stuff like scotch broth and stovies and porridge but hipster porridge um and there's a chicken curry and a chocolate cake and it's I've just you know when you just need a breath from social media from work from your kids it's just been wonderful I've just really enjoyed it that bits you know just a bit of fun um and so I'm really thankful to Belma David and Professor Joe Shop for making these funny little videos <laughs> that are also awesome because you want to eat the stuff at the end so yes that's all that I've been reading um what I've been listening to hasn't been a lot because I've been reading more. Well, I don't know if I mentioned last time that I'd started to read. Hang on, I've got my notes from last time. Had I mentioned it? Listen to. No, I don't think I had. Um, I've started listening. At, well, I'd listen. Oh, look. Words that come out in order of your mouth are helpful. Um, I listened to Weird Sisters by Terry Pratchett, uh, narrated by Celia Imrie. Now, it's not my favourite one of the witches' books. I love Witches Abroad and Lords and Ladies. They're my two absolute favourites. Um, and I have a soft spot for the witches and the gods. If you've read Terry Pratchett books, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, like, there's a million of them and they've been going for years. What are you doing? So, <laughs> the chair, sorry. Um... So Weird Sisters is is not my favourite one for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's the first one they're in and their characters aren't like quite there yet. They're sort of there, but then they're, they're not. However, Celia Imri, I have a bit of a pash for Celia Imri anyway. I think she's an amazing, amazing, versatile actress. And whenever she turns up in anything, it makes me happy. To see her, just really, she's in freaking Highlander for God's sake. Celia freaking Imri. She's not very nice in it either. She's uh, Connor McLeod from the Clan McLeod's um, evil first girlfriend, the one that uh, thinks he should be uh, murdered when he comes back from the dead. Chuck stuff, I don't know why he's trying to escape. Things, yeah. Celia Imri from Dinner Ladies. <laughs> love her anyway she's a brilliant narrator absolutely brilliant engaging um she gets the witch's voices brilliantly and i really enjoyed every second of it i think i enjoyed listening to it more than i enjoyed reading it so that doesn't happen very often um and the other thing we all know about my agatha christie obsession um I listened to more from Marple's case book, which is a BBC production of some of the Miss Marple stories, where Miss Marple is played by June Whitfield. And she's brilliant. She's so good. I've actually listened to these before and I listen to them again. When I'm having trouble sleeping. Sorry, I'm wiggling. Um when I have trouble sleeping, these are often what I put on as well. The poros and the uh, uh Miss Marples because I know the story so well it's not gonna keep us awake and listening you know but anyway they're really good I finished with listening to them um last night and I enjoyed them and I'll probably listen to them again to be honest although it says more from Marple's case book but I can't find any other ones that they made not on audible or anywhere well maybe I'm not looking properly but really enjoy them and June Whitfield's just brilliant and it's like listening out for other voices because I heard Thelma Barlow in there um who is well known for playing Dolly in Dinner Ladies and uh oh from Coronation Street you know the one Les Dennis used to always take off I can't remember what she was called now age setting in but yeah love her she was great um and I've only just started listening to um, The Rivers of London. Um, oh, who's it by again? Ben Aron- Aronovich? Aronovich? I tell you what, I'll talk about this one next time because I've literally just started 
um, listening to it. I have read the book um, before, um, but the narrator's great, and I haven't written his name down either. First name. Things that would be useful information. Anyway, I'll talk more about this next time because I've, I've, um, I'll have um, listened a bit more. But it's funny because the narrator is awesome, absolutely awesome. And it, my um, my brother-in-law who we lost last year, he loved these books, and um, he told us it was because um, he lived in Hammersmith and he recognised all the places that they talk about, and he really liked that. And I'd kind of wanted to say, we should listen to them here because they're awesome. Um, yeah, so I wish I could tell you that the audiobooks, the audiobook is really worth a listen, but I can't. So I'm telling you instead. So I'm only um, a little way in, but it's already very, very, very good. So yes, so that's all that I've um, read and listened to. And actually, I've been talking for quite a long time. I'll try and whiz through next bit because I've made no notes <laughs> didn't make any notes about the rest of the stuff but you know that's that's the way it goes we finally got round to starting to watch season 14 of Supernatural so about five episodes in so um so this is not the last series the last series they're making is series 15 which they made most of I think but then they'd have to stop filming because of lockdown um, so season 15 is the last season and it's not finished. They haven't finished making it yet. So this is season 14. Um, I was a latecomer to Supernatural. Um, I didn't watch it from the beginning. It never really appealed to us, to be honest with you. Um, but my other half is obs was obsessed with it when we met. Um, and he really wanted me to watch it. So I said I would. I watched the first series and I thought that I was all right. But... By the end of season three, I don't know what had happened, but I became just as invested. Um, and I absolutely love, absolutely love the series. I love the actors. Um, we've even been to a Supernatural convention, which I, luckily is going out of business because I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Six hours of killing. Um, but yes, yeah, so... Uh, Lots of people think that Supernatural should have ended a while ago or that it's jumped the shark or all those things. I don't agree, actually. I think it's remained... But I think coming into it later and maybe it's not going through the whole, is it going to get cancelled at this point? Was it the end of season five? The original writer said, no, that's it. I've told my story. I'm off. Um, and they decided to carry on and there was a frou-ha-ha. -ha. I, wasn't, I wasn't there. I wasn't there for that, all of that, so... And then people say, oh, it goes really downhill after that. And I don't agree. Um, coming in with sort of fresh eyes, I don't agree. I think that they're still telling really strong stories, that they get great actors, they get great... Um, there's great stories. The, the switch between Monster of the Week and Ark really beautifully. Um, and sometimes when they go, do go back to Monster of the Week, that's really exciting too. It's like fun and funny. I think they walk the humour in the horror line impeccably um, and there's not and 14 series in that's saying something that's saying something um, you've seen real growth with these characters and I, I'll be extraordinarily sad when it's finished I understand why they wanted to finish it now but I'll be extraordinarily sad. And I think that they're still telling great stories and they probably could carry on telling great stories. So, I mean, not every single episode is a classic because, you know, on what does that happen? Um, but it's fun and it's funny and it's dark and it's twisted and it's wonderful. So I'm enjoying very much. I'm not sure why we didn't get around to watching it, but here we are. Finished... Future Man, so there's three series of Future Man and this has been my obsession. It's been, this is all I have wanted to watch. This has been one of the best shows, new shows that I've seen in as long as I can remember with a core cast of just three um, who are all so amazing. And then there's been other main cast members who have come in and gone out like Hayley Joel Osmond, 
and um, a couple, oh, I can't remember what the guy was called from the first series who I loved. Um, and then in the third series, Seth Rogen, um, who sometimes gets right on my tits, but he's awesome in this, actually plays a game show host called Susan. Um, <laughs> he's very funny, but very good in it. Um, each series has a different um, plot, but it's all basically time travel and how going back to the past can really, really fuck up the future and you see it in action and it is just the put the things that put these poor characters through are just I have cried laughing repeatedly. It is chock full of pop culture quotes and references. Um at some point in one of the I think it might have been series one, uh and they're back in the eighties and uh the walk past uh a big queue went to go into a Corey Hart concert and they're all wearing sunglasses and uh, Tiger shouts why are you all wearing your sunglasses at night and everybody cheers and she doesn't understand I'm like but why are you wearing and we've had I've had that song on repeat now I wear my sunglasses at night on repeat now for about three weeks I can't get enough of it <laughs> the soundtrack is brilliant the pop culture references, the geeky references, um, they're very self-aware, so they you they know that they're referencing things, and often they'll actually say it. That's such and such. The characters that bring in in series three just uh, unreal. Like one, oh no, I can't tell you. I'll spoil. I don't spoil it too much, and it's too good to spoil. Honestly, it's too good. I I'm, I barely even want to talk about it anymore because I don't want to spoil it because it's so good and so funny and if you're a geek it is made for you if you have any form of geekdom if you like action movies if you like 80s action movies particularly um if you like um uh, music if you, anything that you have passion for it's it's probably in there um Gamers, the stuff for you. <laughs> Comic book people, the stuff for you. Film fans, the stuff for you. Um, and it's so fabulous. I can't. I literally can't recommend it enough. And I want everyone. Thank you, Gareth, for watching it. Um, we need to have a chat. Um, please watch it and talk to me about it. All of you who are watching this, all three of you. Two of you, because girls watch it. Um who are watching please watch it it's awesome it's on prime i'm sure there's other ways that you can get it um but we watched it on prime and it's wonderful it's so good and it's only three series and the episodes are only about 20 minutes long as well so it's one of those ones that's perfect if you don't want to start watching a film because you know it's quarter to nine who's going to start watching a film then not me <laughs> Watch Future Man instead, it's amazing. The other thing that we are watching, um, and we've just, we're about six episodes into season three of Farscape. Now, I loved Farscape back in the day. Back in the day. Um, I was a big fan of it. And, um, but this is, I think, some sort of exchange programme in that my other half had never seen it. So now he's watching that one with me and he is loving it. And I've got to tell you, for a show that was made in the 90s that depended a lot on special effects and makeup, it stands up so well, I can hardly believe it. The makeup, the costumes, almost all of the effects. You would not think that you were making, you were watching a show that was made hmm, years ago. Honestly, it looks incredible. Um, if you don't know Farscape, it's about um, an astronaut, John Crichton, who um, sets off on an exploratory mission from Earth. He gets sucked into a wormhole to the other side of the galaxy and, um, and there's life and there's so much life. And he's immediately captured by a peacekeeper force and he's imprisoned in a prison ship um, which is a living ship. She's alive. She's called Moya. Um, and she's just as much a character in the show 
as anybody else, and some other prisoners, and they managed to take over the ship and steal it. Um, so he's off exploring the galaxy with a sort of ragtag misfit crew who you will go to love. So hard. But they don't make you love them straight away because they do make them really alien. And they do things that are alien and things that John struggles with and you struggle with. And that's really, you don't see that a lot. I mean, they're much more alien aliens than sort of Star Trek aliens. And I'm not dissing Star Trek here because I'm a huge Trekkie. Um, but there's something more alien and that some of the actors do, like Chiana, one of the characters, female character who's all grey. Um, and it's just the way she stands and she's always in that position and it's just little touches like that that make it so different and the stories are great. Season three's got a much darker edge. It, there's there's darkness throughout, but there's a much there's a, 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 a there's a lot of humor. A lot of the humor comes from some of the aliens are puppets, like Rigel is a little, it's uh, made with the Henson Company and he's a Henson puppet. And that really helps, I think, with the agelessness of it because they they still look amazing. And there's loads of little funny things like when Rigel's scared, he farts helium and everybody's voices get really high around him. <laughs> and he's a git, he's a little slug git and a thief, but then he'll have moments of pure honour and it's just, oh very well-rounded characters who are neither good nor bad um and it's actually wonderful watching it again this far on because much like the Val McDermott book although I remember a lot of it I don't remember each individual episode so it's been really nice returning to it and it stands up it's an absolutely outstanding bit of science fiction television um and it's really, really up there. It's, if, if not at the top of the list, it is outstanding. There are some wonderful pop culture references in that as well. Uh, for example, John at one point has a conversation with um, the body, but it's not really happening. It's in his brain. And uh, he's wearing cowboy boots. And when he lifts his boots up and crosses them, they've got Andy written on the bottom, which is a reference to Toy Story. Um, <laughs> Which is just so unexpected in a sort of hardcore science fiction program. But it is just truly wonderful. So there's moments like that which will just you are wonderful. Um there's moments that really will break your heart and there's moments that'll make you laugh. There's moments that'll have you so tense. Um and then they're not afraid of um death and realness in there in that as well so it's a roller coaster ride and I'm enjoying every second so um so yeah Farscape if you ever haven't watched it for a while it might be time to dust that one off as well um so yeah that's pretty much all I've um, been reading and listening to and watching I have been watching a few more things but they're going to come under knitting um but if that's if that's the bit that you're here for and you're signing off now before the knitting section then um thank you for watching uh watch future man and come and talk to me about it um you can subscribe to my channel apparently there's a button just down there and uh that would be lovely um that's it see you in a bit knitting <laughs> So, the last time that um, I talked to you, I was knitting this cardi that I'm wearing. <laughs> so, guess what? I finished the thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I finished my cardi. And I'm, it's not really been off my back. Um, and I'm going to lift it up to show you. I made a fucking pocket, yo. Oh, look at that. Pocket. It's the most perfect pocket in the history of pockets. It's like... It's perfect size for my phone, but I won't put my phone in it in case it stretches it, which is stupid because I made it the size of my phone on purpose. And I decided not to put buttons on it in the end, um, although it would fasten, I didn't really want that. So it's just because it's pissing down where I am, I don't know what it's like, yeah, it's just on 
all the time and I made the sleeves just a little bit too long so they would be like super cozy so I can fold them back if I want to but I don't like, I like them like this and be all cozy and I'm in love with it I think it's one of my favorite things that I've ever knit even though it's like a just a basic cardi and I'm living in it and I love it and it's so soft and wonderful so um, I look, when I looked at the pattern again, it's not as problematic as I said it was last time. So it does. Have you knit the sleeves flat and seam them? But I don't understand why you would do that because it, it has you um, pick up stitches sort of all the way around and then knit them flat and see why would you, I don't understand why you would do that when you could just knit them in the round and save yourself a massive seaming. Who likes seaming? I don't like semen um oh that sounds terrible <laughs> s-e-a-m <laughs> oh god i do not like Sewing things up, darling. I don't like the semen. No, it's not for the likes of me. <laughs> anyway, I effortlessly finished my cardigan with no semen at all. Get me. Um. So yeah, really happy with it. Um. If you're happy knitting things flat do that but honestly it's so easy to knit things in the round and if you need help with that you just drop me a line and I'll I'll help you because it's easy it's much easier um and then you just knit a tube every hand gesture everything that's coming out of my mouth now sounds dreadful <laughs> or brilliant whichever way you want to look at it yeah you know what I'm saying um I've been on a bit of a a knit and kick actually so I've knit two full pairs of socks which I don't think I'd cast on had I cast it on the last time I spoke to you I don't think I had so this oh bright light I don't know if you'll be able to see this um yarn is beautiful it's um a cashmere it's a merino nylon cashmere blend um and I didn't have a pattern. I've knit so many socks now. I don't really need a pattern. These are from my friend Sandra. There's a little tiny, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little tiny cable running down either side. Not massive, just a little bit of a touch. Um, the yarn is by Fondant Fibres. And the colour was called Eudenil. More French for you. Just spoiling you this evening. Um, Geordie French is the best French thing you'll find. <laughs> anyway, so I knit those. There's two of them. One of them, um, was knit while watching and reading about all of the Black Lives Matter issues and is therefore quite smaller than the other one because I was stressed, so I was knitting tighter. So, um... They should still both fit. Sandra, I've um, tried to stretch it the slightly tighter one out a little bit so that it... But this is one of the things about knitting when you're knitting two things separately like this. Is that if your tension... your ten, My tension can be changed if I've had a glass of wine. Um, if I'm tired. Um, and it really has a, quite a dramatic effect on what you're knitting. I don't know if it's the same for crochet and I can't imagine that it is. Um, there's something about, you know, another thing that I do do is if something really exciting is happening on telly, I knit faster. I know this is not just me. If I'm running out of wool, I also knit faster, you know, to finish before it runs out. So that's entirely logical. But anyway, this yarn is scrumptious with the cat. Can I get a good... Nah, it's just blowing out, isn't it? But it's sort of like a greeny, grey. It's lovely. It's really lovely. And this one, see what it does. Oh, it's not quite as orange as that. It's more like a russet orange. And that's coming up like really, really bright 
orangey red isn't it so these ones are for Amy um again no pattern what I did was a knit just to make it a little bit different I knit the front and the instep in um reverse stock and stitch and the rest of it in stock and stitch and one of these is slightly bigger than the other because when you're not going from a pattern and you're just winging it then you'll knit two different size heels but they're close enough and everybody has one foot bigger than the other anyway so you'll just have to you cannot honestly you cannot I can tell because I knit them but really it's quite hard to tell, they look the same. I can't remember what this yarn was. It's pretty though, isn't it? I wish I could. But this is, like I say, this is more like a russety, autumn-y um, orange rather than day glow orange there. So I knit all four of those socks. I also knit, I've had to actually take these off my feet because um, that's where they live now. I had knit one of these socks back in August and this isn't as orange as it's shown up either, but it is a very glowy colour. Um, so I knit one of these back in August and I finally got round to knitting the other one. So I do actually have two. Um, and this is a knit with a pattern and it's a pattern that I really like. And I've knit several times before. I think I made is some out of this pattern. And it's not really shown. Oh no, there. It's called My Cup of Tea, so there's just a little bit of pattern on the front, but the the rest is plain, the back and the sole. You don't want pattern on your sole of your feet because it'll rub. Um, but it's a really pretty pattern. It's still not coming up brilliantly well, is it? I can't get to grips with the camera. Um, no pattern on the toes either because I don't like patterns on the toes. The yarn, I love the pattern, it's really well written and there's a chart and written instructions for it which I like. I used the chart for this one actually, I found it slightly easier because I had to keep looking up what the, the chart meant. Um, and one of them slightly different to the other. <laughs> Turns out if you leave nearly a year in between knitting socks, you think you know what you're doing but you know. You cannot tell either that I knit them ever so slightly different and I'd forgotten what toe I'd done on these ones so they've got a slightly different toe. However, I love the pattern and the yarn is um, Third Vault Yarns, Lola. Um, and this colourway was part of a Supernatural box that I bought. So I got two yarns. Um, one was a, I think the greeny coloured one was called Winchester. I'm just see if slide around, which I knit. Um, the dots are hat out of he likes a slouchy hat um and that's i think it was called winchesters um and it's sort of green and brown and you know the colors of their um checked shirts type of thing and th but this one i think was called lucifer's cage which would make kind of sense because it does look really sort of fiery doesn't it um lucifer in supernatural is an amazing character i love him lots lots of his um, so this yarn is absolutely beautiful. The colour is glowing um, and it knit beautifully. Um, and I really highly recommend it. She does a lot of geeky themed yarns. Um, and there's often stuff in her shop. Um, but I really like being buying geeky themed yarns. I know it's silly, isn't it? But I really do like that. And she does a lot. And she does a lot of different thought. She does these mystery boxes every now and again as well that are always geek themed. And sometimes it's not my bag, so I wouldn't get it. But Supernatural is um, in the box. I also got a little tiny bobby key ring. And some other bits and pieces. Oh, some really awesome stitch markers like angel wings and the sort of sun tattoo that they have um stitch markers oh it's a beautiful box it was really beautiful um i would get another one but there so three pairs of socks one of the things that i've been um oh and i've got another pair on the go oh yes um this i don't know if you can see is quite a heavily cabled pair I don't see this is the cables coming down here and here 
perfect that you can see that as well. It's just meant for phone camera, so. Uh, this is a sparkle yarn by uh, the Knitting Goddess. Um, and it's really nice. And my friend Corinne, uh, the princess, gave this to me. And these are going to be a present as well, actually, for one of my friends. And I'm really, really happy with it. The pattern as well is by um, Rian Drinkwater, who um, I met over the SFX forums many, many, many years ago and actually didn't meet in real life. Ten years later, I met her at, a, um, at Wolfest and that was really lovely. So yes, this is her pattern and it's a really nice one and it's very highly um, cabled. You can see all the cables going on and it's and this one here as well and I really like it. So there's them. Uh, the reason for the crazy sock knitting um, is because uh, one of my favourite video, knitting related video um, podcasts to watch is um, an American one by the Knit Girls with three L's. And every year they do a thing called Stash Dash where you try and knit as much as possible between May and August, which is uh, one of the Knit Girls as a teacher and that's when she's on our summer break. Um, and it, there's no prizes or anything like that. It's just to, to try and knit as much as possible. So I put mine in that I wanted to knit 3k, 3, yeah, 3k, 3,000 meters. And um, I think my total at the minute is about 2,200 and I've got till August. So like I, I went for this challenge and then I thought oh, I should have put myself in the 5k but I never thought I would knit that much ever ever but of course we're on lockdown and stuff as well um but I really like the Nichols it's an American podcast they're both quite uh read a lot of geeky books and stuff as well and I like to to listen to them the other um knitting podcast that I really like is a British girl and it's called Knitting Vicariously um uh, with Dunder Knits Caroline and I love that one as well so they're the two that I would most I uh, recommend as well as Stranded Dye Works, the Stranded podcast. I love that as well. That's Amy, who is in Scotland. Um, the other thing that I've been watching, knitting related as well, is that the Yarn Harlot, if you're a knitter, you probably know who the Yarn Harlot is. She's a writer. She writes knitting humour. And she's had a knitting blog, which has been running for something like 15 years or something like that. And she's very funny and she's an expert knitter and she's a knit teacher as well. So she makes most of her living from teaching, I think, um, knitting and obviously with everything being shut down. Um, she started a Patreon. Um, so, and it, there's no tiers, it's all just $6. That's the, that's the only tier and you, you get, that's, that's it. Um, so for our first thing that she did she did a video on how to mend socks and it was amazing I enjoyed it so much and I actually learned some stuff so she had some socks that were um so she had some that were moth damaged here and like here and they were stripy and um somewhere else and she showed how how to repair them how to fix them, how to fix, how to take out and re-knit a toe, how to take out and re-knit a cuff, how to um, mend stuff, pick them up and kitchener them and knit them. Oh, it was so interesting. Um, and I learned a lot. And um, so I really enjoyed watching that. And then her second one's come out and it's about knitting socks as well. I am so obsessed. Um and she wants you to knit a swatch and I'm like a swatch for fucking socks man but then she goes in to explain all the reasons why and shows you pictures and about the um you know what you want out if you knitted a pair of socks is you want minimum for five six years wear out of them when you've put 30 you know how long does it take me to knit a pair of socks about 20 hours um depending on the length of the sock um, so if you knit them well enough, they should last. So, and how to go about doing that and about yarn choices and stuff that some of it I knew, 
um but some of it I didn't and I, I just really enjoy watching people knit and mend and talk about knitting um so I really if you're looking for something then I that that's really good so that's it um I haven't done any spinning since uh, the last time I talked to you. Well, just a little bit, but it was the same. I'm, I haven't finished the one that I showed you. So um, next time, maybe. Um, so I think I've talked to you off now. I think I've been really less tangent-y than yeah. usual. Haven't I? Have I? Maybe? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um. So yes, um, if you want to contact me and chat about anything like Future Man that you've watched in its entirety, um, you can chat on the box just down there and um, or you can find me on Twitter. I have been avoiding Twitter a little bit these days just because I'm finding it a little bit overwhelming. But um, yeah, I am on there. So I'm at at Stace underscore W and I'm on Instagram as Whittle Waffle. Um, please feel free to get in touch and uh, sympathise about my 2008 wars or um, talk to me about Future Man. Have I mentioned that I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts about Future Man? Um, so yeah, those are the places you get in touch with me and uh, I'll see you next time. Hopefully it'll not be as long. Thanks for watching. Bye.